Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and I'm here today to share another pot holder tutorial with you. You might remember that I have shared my patchwork pot holder tutorial, but this is a little bit different, and this is a tutorial that I've really been having a lot of fun with lately. These are string or strip pieced pot holder blocks, and they go together so fast and are super fun and easy to quilt and get put together and I'm going to walk you through the process each step of the way. Okay, before we get started, I just wanted to remind you of the patchwork pot holders that I talked about. I have the pattern available for them, just a simple PDF download in two different sizes. And we're also going to do today's string block pot holder in two different sizes. And I think it's really fun if you're gifting to give a set with perhaps two different sizes and two different styles. So it's fun to have, you know, the patchwork pot holder for one and then the string or strip piece for the other and also do them in two different sizes. Okay, so today, so I've got these finished, so I'm going to show you, for the tutorial, I'm going to show you the, the larger size. You're going to need a backing for your pot holder. And I cut these at 10 and a half by 14 and a half. And you'll also need for that the same size batting. And I do two pieces of batting, so the 10 and a half by 14 and a half. And one piece of Inselbrite. You can buy the Inselbrite in a package like this, which will do a really nice bunch of pot holders. It's 45 inches wide and one yard. So this this will do quite a few pot holders. You can also get it on the bolt, often from your favorite quilt shop or for sure from Joann's or other, uh, you know, big box craft or sewing stores. So, but this, this doesn't have a right or a wrong side, but you will want to sandwich it for your pot holder in between the two pieces of batting. And what I do at the beginning is I just get this all ready to go so that this is all ready to go and next I work on my pot holder top. So we'll set this aside and I'll show you how you're going to do the pot holder top. You're going to t get a piece of muslin or any kind of plain fabric and this fabric is going to be the size that you want your finished pot holder to be. So this is eight and a half by ten and a half. It's the same size as uh, this pot holder before I rounded the edges. And then you're just going to collect a whole bunch of different strips and strings. Now I have used strips from one inch wide to one and three quarter inch. And I find that one and three quarter inches wide is about the biggest that I like to put on these. Otherwise, it's just taking up too much space. So I like to just get them all out so I can see what I have. You notice there, some of them are different lengths. I'm going to use the longer pieces for the longest parts of the pot holder. And some of these short ones I'll save so that they can go down at the lower edges. But basically what you're going to do is you're just going to put, take two strips that will both cover the widest part of your rectangular square, put them right sides together, and sew a quarter inch seam. And then you will take that to the iron and you will press it over and then we will add another strip. I'll head over to the sewing machine and press this over and come back and show you. Okay, when I actually went over to the sewing machine, I actually added two strips, one to either side of my, my beginner's two strips. 
So I added the coral stripe on this side and pressed it out and the green paisley on this side. So I will now just kind of figure out where I want some of the other strips to go. I like to keep the colors, you know, kind of separated, don't have two of the same color right next to each other. And I know I have another green. And it looks like I might have to cut a couple more strips. We'll have to see after I get them sewn. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the rest. I'm going to add these onto this side and these onto this side. And just I just sew one strip at a time. I just add it and press it. And then add another one and press it until I get my whole foundation covered. And if you want a few more examples of this, you can actually look at my string block tutorial video and you can see, I think I did a video, a, a shot after every single strip was added for that. But I'll head over and when I come back, this will be all covered with our strips. Okay, I'm, I'm back from sewing all of the strips onto my kind of background piece. And I wanted to show you just a couple things. When you get to the end and you just have a little bit of fabric showing, sometimes it's easier just to pick a, a small square of fabric. That way you're not cutting a small strip. And I ended up doing that on both ends actually. I just had a little bit remaining. So then what you're gonna do is you're gonna turn this over and we are gonna trim off just exactly around the edges of the rectangle or the square if you're making a square version. And some of these strips, if they get a little long while you're adding additional strips, you can actually trim them off then. I just, you know, was kind of hurrying to get this done for the video, so I didn't take the time to trim those off, but I, I could have just kind of cut them a little bit so they weren't Okay, and we'll do the final cut, and it's always so fun after the final cut to turn it over and see what it really looks like. I feel like you just don't get the, the full picture of what it is until you turn it over. Okay, so this is going to be super, super cute. The next, and, and I love for pot holders, I didn't realize it until I started making these, but I love having this extra layer of fabric in my pot holder. It's, it's not a really noticeable difference from you know, the patchwork pot holder, which isn't built on a foundation, but the foundation just really, I feel like gives it a, a little more stability. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our stack of layered fabrics and I'll just go over it again quickly. The backing, wrong side up, batting, insole bright, batting, and then your pot holder. And I gave you those measurements quite a bit bigger because sometimes things can shift when you're doing your machine quilting and just kind of get moved all over the place. So I do like to have it just extra big around all four sides. Now, this is something else I love about this pot holder even more than my patchwork pot holders. With the patchwork pot holders, you really do need to quilt in one direction first and then the other direction. And sometimes it's hard. I'm trying to see if I have a bubble here. I actually don't on this one. Maybe I do on this one. Um, sometimes it's just hard to you know keep everything flat. Uh, I guess there's a little kind of a bubble right there. But what I found with these string block pot holders is that we're just going to quilt kind of a quarter of an inch away from every single seam and you're only going in one direction. And so it's really easy to keep these nice and flat. And you can, the best way is to use a walking foot. You can also, if you just lengthen your stitch length to about a 3.5, 
you can get away without using a walking foot on these because as I said, you're going in just the one direction. And this is what it looks like if you're doing a square version. So I've got my square pot holder all ready to go. And I will just uh, go over to the sewing machine and I will just put some quick quilting in and then I'll show you how to trim this up. Okay, I thought I would just walk you through how I actually quilt one of these. It really goes super fast and, and, and it's just really easy to do. I did put my walking foot on and I will, I quilted the other one that I've been showing you in this tutorial without my walking foot so we can compare them when I'm done with this one. So I'm just going to, oh and I also lengthened my stitch length to 3.5 even though I have the walking foot. So I'm just going to put this part of my walking foot on that seam and use that for a guide. And I've just got a nice, a nice little line there. And I'll just do that for every single seam. The, wa the walking foot really does kind of pull the fabrics. The, what it does is it takes the top fabrics and the bottom fabrics and feeds them through your machine at the same time so that you don't get any bubbles, I guess. Now something else I do when I'm finished with the quilting is I do like to do a little edge stitch all the way around the pot holder. It really helps when you're adding the binding so that things don't pucker or slip. So I'm just going to go just barely one eighth of an inch away from the edge. Sounds like my bobbin is running low. See if I can get through this. I think it'll make it. Okay, we'll head back over to the cutting table and I'll show you how to trim these up. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine. I quilted the one that I'm making with our Balboa fabrics and I also quilted the Christmas fabric one as you saw on the video. And I did trim this one around all four edges. I'll just show you how I did that with this one. I just take a straight edge or a ruler and I just trim okay so and as I mentioned when I f did the filming over here I also went a little bit around just an eighth of an inch around from all four edges on on both of these now you can look and I don't really know that there's a difference. I use the walking foot on the Christmas pot holder. I did not use the walking foot on this one. They both look pretty good. Actually, this one might be a tiny bit better. So if you have the, the walking foot, it, I think it will make a difference. But if you don't, you can get a nice look as well. And on the back, we've got our quilted lines. 
everything looks really good. Now you can finish your pot holder as a rectangle or a square, but I really love the curved edges. And I use the two and a half inch circle from the Creative Grids non-slip rotary cutting circles. I just really love these. They have the circles in all different sizes. And as I mentioned, I like this two and a half inch circle for my pot holder edges. And what I do is I just kind of get two edges of the circle on two edges of my pot holder. And I just trim just right around there. And then I just do that on all four sides. One thing to note, if you do curve the edges, you are going to need to use a bias binding. And so we'll put a link to that video that I shared with how to make a bias binding. We have a video for that. So we'll put a link to that in the description and I think we can pop it up here on the screen as well. And you're noticing I'm having to, you know, that's uh, quite a few layers that I'm cutting through, so I don't know that my blade is as sharp as it should be for this. Another tip too is if you're going to do a lot of pot holders and be cutting through all this material, you might want to use a, a separate rotary cutter from when you cut your fabrics because this will dull your blade a lot more quickly. My blade was getting older and so I decided just to use it. But I'll go ahead and trim this one quickly too. Okay, just throw these away. We've got it all trimmed. It's all ready to go. And I've got bias binding ready to go for both of these projects actually. I, as I said, I've got the video for that. And you will want to bind it with a bias binding. The other thing you can do is to add a tab to the back if you want a hanging tab for your pot holder. And I will show you how I do that. Okay, I just have a really simple method I use to make these little pot holder hangers. I take a two and a half inch by five inch rectangle of fabric and I press it in half. Then I press both sides into the middle and fold it up so that all those raw edges are in the middle of my little hanging tab. And then I just sew a quick stitch, one line of stitching to hold it together. And I fold it in half and I've, I've added this one to my pot holder. So you can see the stitching along the side and I just kind of baste it in so it's there while I add the binding. And a couple tips for adding the binding. I've, I've got this one ready to go. Uh, what I do is I take, well, it's actually easier on a long side, so you'll have more space. I will kind of start it right there. I'm just going to add a wonder clip. But I won't actually start stitching until right about here so that this will all be free so that after I have come all the way around that I can join those two ends. And I'm actually going to go stitch this around and come back and show you how I pin it to sew the two ends together. Okay, I'm just going to show you how I finish up the edges. I do have a two-part binding tutorial for this method with two separate videos and you can watch those for really a, a more detailed look at this. And it, it is part two in, in that binding video series where I show this. But what I've done is I, I started sewing kind of where I showed you that I was going to start sewing. And I went all the way around and I just kind of ease it in slowly around the curves. Try to stay as close as I can, you know, to keep that at one quarter of an inch. And just kind of go all the way around and then I stopped right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap these by just about two inches 
and then I'm going to cut this and you can mark it but I usually just eyeball it for binding okay so I've got that ready to go and now I'm going to join these two ends and I'm going to put uh, the one that I've finished with flat and put this one flat on top of it kind of at a 90 degree angle and it's great with a pot holder you can just fold it so that you can get these two lined up and I do usually stick a pin in there and what you're going to do is you're going to sew a diagonal line from this corner to that corner and you can take a pencil and a ruler and you can draw a line with a quilt it's a little bit easier because you can leave yourself more room I don't I don't like to unpick those edges around the corner it's because the corners are a little trickier to get lined up but I'm just going to draw my diagonal line and I'm going to go sew that seam and then I'll come back and show you. Okay, I've got that diagonal seam sewn and so then I'm just going to trim and just leave a quarter of an inch there. I love these scissors. They are so sharp and just great for working with small things like this. They're the Kai Omnigrid scissors. So, and you can press this with an iron or you can finger press it or use a seam roller. I usually just finger press it on these pot holders. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to finish my quarter inch seam from here to here, the part that's open right now. And then I'll press it and and my binding will be on and I'll be ready to hand stitch the back. Okay, I'm back from the sewing machine. I've got that all stitched up. I did a quick press. One thing I do, I believe I sh shared this in my patchwork pot holder video, is I just kind of make sure that the ends aren't, the four curves aren't too bulky. And these scissors are really great for just just anywhere you notice a little bit of extra bulk, just getting that out so that your corners turn nicely. Uh, let's see. I just like to do that around the edges and then I'm I'm simply just going to flip it I'm going to use my clover wonder clips to secure it down and then uh, you can hand or machine bind along the edges I feel like if you're wanting to practice machine binding pot holders are a great project to practice on because they're small and if you are going to machine you would turn around to this side and you would just kind of sew right along that edge or in the ditch so that you catch this fabric on the back and I actually just really enjoy the hand binding process so I just put a stack on the couch and when I watch television I usually have pot holders or table runners um, this time of year I'm doing a lot of gifts um, or quilts if I have them and I just sit and bind them when I watch TV. But anyway, you get the point. You're just going to put that around and we'll have our string pieced pot holder. And I've got these, one, these already finished so that you can see. Okay, and I will have links to the tools that I used and to the other videos that I talked about. And I will also have a PDF pattern with kind of just some simple directions for you to make the square or the rectangular version of this strip pieced pot holder. You, you'll have to go to my blog to get the PDF, but I will have a link 
um, directly to that post in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this string pieced potholder tutorial and I hope that you will make several of them for yourself and your friends and your family. If you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you'd share with a friend, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.